Good morning, everybody. In TEDx Youth at PPS IJC, today's theme is concept to conclusion. And I would try to demonstrate that how nanotechnology can, uh, can make our concept to culminate into some useful materials or technology for the mankind. I'll be focusing on a particular material called carbon. And in next few minutes, I will take you through the fascinating world of carbon nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is a branch of science or, and engineering devoted to the designing, producing, and using structures, devices, and systems by manipulating atoms and molecules in nanoscale. And now, what do you mean by nanoscale? Nanoscale is a scale where we talk any dimension at the range of 10 to the power minus 9. So nanoscale is, nanoscale is one or more dimension should be in the nanometer range. That is 100 nanometer. And in nanoscale, what happens? The properties of a material change drastically and compared to the bulk scale. And next. But the challenge is to translate this nanoscale properties into large scale. Unless we can translate this property, we cannot utilize the exotic properties of in the nanoscale. So now, I am talking about a material carbon, as I told you. So almost all the carbon-based materials, they are based on a structure called graphene. So what is graphene? Here, the carbon atoms are hexagonally arranged in a particular fashion in a planar structure. And with this structure, we can give rise to any of kind of material what we want to design. Like, if we want to stack one layer above another, then we, we end up with a material called graphite. Again, if we try to roll this graphene sheet into a cylinder, seamless cylinder, we called it nanotube. And if it is a single cylinder, we called it single wall carbon nanotube. And if there are concentric multi wall carbon nanotubes, that's also possible. Again, we can give a curvature to this graphene layer into cage-like structure or a football-like structure. It is called fullerene. And we can also add oxygen atom into the lattice structure of this carbon. And we end up with something called graphene oxide. So all these materials, graphite, carbon nanotube, graphene oxide, fullerene, they have excellent properties. And if we see what are these excellent properties, let me compare them with a common material called steel. We, every day we use steel. You see, the last but one row, that is strength. So steel is having a strength 1 to 2 GPA. GPA means gigapascal. Now if you see the carbon nanotubes of graphene, they have almost 1 to 2 orders higher strength. But see the density, that is almost 1 6 that of the steel density. So something called, that is called specific strength. That means strength per unit weight or per unit density, which is huge for this carbon-based nanomaterials. And that is why these carbon-based nanomaterials, they find applications in composites, in water treatment, in gas adsorption, energy storage, drug delivery, sensors, catalysis, field emission, and so on and so forth. So this material, is really wonder material, and depending on our application, we can synthesize them. So now I will tell you what are the various process of synthesizing carbon nanomaterials. That is the challenge. So there are two approaches. First approach is called top-down approach. So top-down means, if you see, we have a large, prop uh, large material like graphite, it is naturally available. Can we take down the layers out of this graphite and end up with a single layer called graphene? So this approach is called top-down approach. How we do it? We take some kind of graphite material, and there are some process called exfoliation of graphite, like electrochemical exfoliation or mechanical exfoliation, and you end up with some structure 
called graphene. You can see right, right hand bottom most structure, that is graphene. Again, the second approach is called bottom, bottom up approach. And in bottom up approach, we start with the molecules or atom, and we try to arrange them in a particular fashion and end up with the same structure. So there are two approaches, top down and this bottom up. And this, this bottom up approach generally is used in a process called chemical vapor deposition. So they are what we do, we take some hydrocarbon gas, try to crack them. Hydrocarbon means there is carbon and hydrogen. So we take the carbon atoms or molecules from there and try to uh, arrange them in a particular fashion. And by arranging them, you can see, you can end up with two different structure. One is called carbon nanotube, and another is also graphene. So depending on the processing condition, we can end up with those structure. The video, what happens, this what is fluidized weight chemical vapor deposition? In a fluidized weight uh, deposition, uh, yes. So some solid materials, they are, by the help of a gas or fluid, they are made to behave like a overall fluid. And what happens in this condition, you are exposing all the particles in the suspended condition. And in this fashion, if you send a hydrocarbon gas through this fluidized particle, and you can deposit nanoparticle and carbon nanotube by this method. Now, when we see this carbon nanotube in naked eye, it, is, it looks like a powder, simple other black powder. But if we see something called in transmission electron microscopy, you can actually see their tubular structure. And there is something called high resolution transmission electron microscopy by which you can even see the atomic planes what are present in this structure. Now the next process which is very important to make nanoparticle is called plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. Now as I was talking, something called graphene. So but the graphene is a two dimensional structure. How we can use them in three dimension? Because that is also very important. So a three dimensional graphene can be made by using a low pressure plasma enhanced CVD. And another beautiful structure, like we can also make a hybrid structure. So the hybrid structure is at the bottom you get three-dimensional graphene, and at the top of that you can grow the vertically aligned carbon nanotubes. These structures are having very high surface area, so they can be used for energy storage material or as a sensor material. So these materials are very, very useful for this purpose. Now, another very important structure I am showing it. It looks like flower. We have given the name graphene flower. Now, here it is looking like flower, but if you see in Nakeda, it is just like a particle. But if you see with the help of a microscope, you can see this kind of structure. What is the beauty of this structure? You can get so much high surface area. If you see, these are vertically aligned graphene, and you can really use them for supercapacitor application. This is called floating catalyst chemical vapor deposition. Now, what tap water kind of thing you are seeing, it is nothing but the carbon atoms and molecules coming along with the gas, and we are able to manipulate them in such a fashion that it can come coherently, and finally, you can get a structure like this kind of paper. And this carbon nanotube paper or sheet is having such important properties that you can use them for sensors, uh, in filter application, in mask, in EMI shielding, as well as in ballistic application. Now, same carbon nanotube paper can be used to make fiber out of that. Same, same thing is coming inside a water and then a fiber is coming. If you can see, I don't know, a fiber is getting wound by this. And when this kind, this fiber is a very high strength fiber. How we made this fiber? Actually, the same carbon molecule or atom 
and by nanotechnology we arrange these atoms in such a fashion and finally you end up with this kind of high strength fiber and this fiber is not not only high strength it is having also high electrical conductivity you can see by using this fiber you can glow a led bulb and using a usb port from the computer so other applications in uh, carbon nanotube is we can use them for selective separation of metal ions from the very lean solution like if we want to particularly take out some important metal from the from a solution so we can use carbon nanotube polymer bead we can dope other atoms like nitrogen or boron inside the carbon atoms and we can also change their properties like here i am showing this carbon nanotubes they can be used for hydrogen storage so when only carbon nanotube is there hydrogen storage is not that remarkable but when we add nitrogen atom in place of a carbon atom we can improve the hydrogen storage but again if we can do boron there is a tremendous improvement in the hydrogen storage so what i want to mean by decorating atom or molecule in nano scale you can really manipulate the properties of the material here this kind of tubular structure has been used for water purification purpose and also for the capture of virus how it is possible now if you see if you can make a random network of carbon nanotube and the porosity you can manipulate in the range of that of the virus or that of the bacteria and you can physically trap them so here i could see something called p1 fudge so p1 fudge is a uh, virus to bacteria so that we have shown that how almost 99% of the p1 fudge could be trapped by using this material this is another important application how to enhance the ballistic performance of a of a material so here in the ceramic we have used carbon nanotubes and by that we could improve some property called fracture toughness fracture toughness means how much energy it can absorb before it gets fractured so by increasing that here in the second image you can see six bullets have been pumped there so ak47 as well as slr and you can see in the next two images which are radiographic image the bullets are totally broken and trapped inside that so that i want to say that this nanomaterial can en enhance the ballistic property as well another very important thing is simple concrete so we could improve the compressive strength of a concrete almost 40% by adding graphene oxide as i told in if you remember my second slide graphene oxide is one material so it it could improve the compressive strength as well as the fire resistance of a material and by which there is a mechanism means the, it it creates some nano crystalline region where there is a nucleation of the uh, something called hydration product and by which the density gets improved now it is time to conclude now what i want to say the advancement of civilization is highly dependent on the conceptualization of ideas and one can design futuristic materials based on the concept and the challenge is is to convert this conceptual material into reality and nanotechnology has given us opportunity for the realization of our ideas and in future we have to use all of you must be hearing these two terms one is called artificial intelligence and another is called additive manufacturing so these two also are coming in a big way for a futuristic development of materials and growth of our society and with this i thank you all for your kind attention